Looking for Alice, a Gunverstrom novel, by Luna Miller, narrated by Nano Nagel. Prologue I hate you. I've hated you as long as I can remember. Your big breasts and your pouting lips disgust me. The way you look from behind your painted eyelashes. You think you're so adorable. You make me want to puke. You think your charm can get you anything you want. You think everybody eats out of your hand. Well, believe me, nobody does. In fact, it's your hand they're eating, down to the bone. And they won't stop there. You're condemning yourself to death. And when it comes, it'll be too late. I won't stand by you. I'll choose death first. One. Getting mad always made Gunvor Strum's head feel like it was going to explode. If she could, she'd kick the little shit till he cried for his mother, and then some more. She was well trained in Aikido and prided herself as being physically fit but she's a sixty-five-year-old woman, and wiser for it. She quickly accessed the potentially volatile situation in front of her and determined there was a better way to deal with this punk than to play as he wanted. So instead, she laid a protective arm on the young girl and glared at the big-mouthed idiot. Why do you keep doing this? Can't you see what you're doing to her? Gunva was so tired of hearing her own voice repeating the same things she'd been saying for days on end. And what was particularly annoying was that she knew he'd come out with the same crap as always, which was exactly what he did. Listen, you old bag, how many times have I got to tell you, mind your own business and piss off? Gunva looked at him, waiting for her to reply with the usual placating words. Just leave the girl alone. Go and pick on someone your own size instead. So he got a real shock when she snarled. Once more and I'll sort you out for real. She caught the surprise in his face before he covered it with a false laugh. Oh, yeah? What are you going to do? Clip me round the ear? You can always try. Humiliating as it was, it gave them the chance to escape without any more trouble. The sound of swearing and mocking laughter followed them down the steps and out of the tube station. Gunva loosened her grip on the girl, but kept her close to her side as they walked out across Fruangenstore and turned left towards the walkway between Konsum and the gym. They walked in silence, with Gunva feeling a mounting sense of injustice. This has to stop, she thought. It started on Monday, although it had presumably been going on longer than that. But it was on Monday that Gunva happened to be on the same tube as the girl, who later introduced herself as Elin. Gunva had been sitting towards the back of the train, so when she got off at Fruangen, most of the other passengers had already left the station, apart from Elin and the young man who had blocked her route through the barriers. He hadn't said anything. He just stood in front of her and grinned. When she tried to go past him to one side, he blocked her way, and when she tried the other side, he moved and blocked her again. Gunfo noticed that he had two friends sitting on the bench nearby who seemed to find it all highly amusing. "'What are you two laughing about? You're a bit old for this sort of nonsense, aren't you?' Gunva snapped at the boys on the bench before going forward to help the girl get past her tormentor. Ellen had thanked her and said it wasn't the first time it had happened. She tried to brush it off. She told Gunva that the boys weren't doing any real harm. When Gunva suggested that she get off the train at Vastertorp instead, Ellen demurred, not because it was too long a walk, but because she didn't want to let them think they'd won. She didn't want them to think this was getting to her any more than it actually was. She had swallowed her pride reluctantly and agreed to text Gunfa every day to say which train she would be on when she came home. Since then, Gunfa had taken the same train as Elin 
Sample complete. Ready to continue?